I'm standing in Rendlesham Forest, where on December 28th to 29th, 1980, just behind me, Colonel Holt and a group of NCOs and officers had their sighting of events, which is recorded on the tape that he made that night, about a quarter mile that way. My event took place right here, heading toward this farmer's field. Over in the distance was two uh, cameras, and one was a video camera, one was a motion picture camera. And at the time, the video cameras were very bulky technology, but I recognized it for what it was. Everything I saw in this field was documented on film that night, both on still photographs and on motion picture. There's no doubt about it. Barbara Robbins was the chemistry teacher at the time. And she just grabbed a camera and started clicking. Looking back from the West End, there was confrontation between Mr. Sambleby, Barbara Robbins, and a man I'd never seen before. I thought it was a police uniform, but it was just dark blue. It was demanded that she hand over, not the film, but the entire camera. He said what happened is this. They took the film and they spooled off the part that had the UFO on it and they took a pair of scissors and cut it off. They put that on a separate reel, they put it in their briefcase, they handed Major Mansman back the rest of the film and said, here, I don't need to remind you, Major Mansman, of the, of the uh, severity of a security breach. We'll consider this uh, incident closed. Is Once they started moving, they went straight up, you know, for a while, and then they went zap, and they was off our scope, and our scope would go out to 260 miles, mm -hmm. and so that you calculate that, and that's pretty fast. I called headquarters, and the guy on the phone, he says, I said, okay, we got a contact. And he says, you mean SAC is running a mission against you? I said, not SAC. Not SAC. What then? I said, Cosmos. Said, Wait a minute. He said, scramble on your phone. So there's switch you could throw that scrambles everything of mine. And I said, okay, my phone's scrambled. Yours scramble, mine's scramble. You taking pictures? Taking pictures. Taking radar pictures? Taking radar pictures? Taking real pictures. He says, okay. Don't say another word. He says, I will send a courier up there. He'll get there in about six hours. You turn everything over to him. We are never officially ever noted for those pictures that they ever received those pictures. It was just went secret. It went black like it never happened. I did get close enough to uh, get some, uh, some photographs taken that were later brought over to the um, uh, to the command center. Well, from the photograph, I could remember the shape. What I would have said would have been, uh, I would say a cylinder. I would say a cylinder because it was abrupt. It had abrupt ends. They didn't take the ends didn't taper down like most aircraft. An awful lot. You saw a lot of the pictures. Uh, most of the pictures we have seen duplicates of today. Uh, some were the pictures that I saw were, I think, uh, maybe uh, a little bit better. Uh, they were taken by uh, Air Force pilots, These as were well pictures of, uh, of the UFOs. Like, yes, so they actually had pictures of UFOs in these. Oh, places. indeed, they did. Yes, not only the Air Force, but but uh, some were taken by civilian pilots. Uh, some were taken by uh, uh, Marine Air Corps uh, pilots. Uh, it's, and, and some were foreign. On their trip to the to that moon or to the moon itself, I heard the expression of the bogey coming in at eleven o'clock. Well, familiar with that particular term, I perked my ears and started listening a little bit, and discovered that um, Houston and the astronauts were talking back and forth about a collision, and uh, the astronauts asked for uh, permission to do avoidance for a collision and Houston finally granted that permission to do that and after the after the comm link settled down a little bit the astronaut said it's not necessary they are now par paralleling our course and there was a discussion 
as to what was paralleling that course. There was another type of ship. There were portals there that they could see in. They could see beings of some sort. They did not describe these beings. They just took photographs. And after a while, a few thousand miles, and then they took off from the capsule that they were flying in and went away. So I was like, you know, my gosh, what's going on here? And he says, we want you to brief this at the, you know, stand-up general briefing this morning and uh, explain what happened to everybody. And I was like, do you want me to tell General Tom Sadler and everybody in the command post that, you know, we captured an alien? Almost every day I went to the photo lab because in your briefings you have, uh, well, four screens and you have to keep them all, you know, filled up with pretty pictures and so on. And uh, there they indicated that they had taken pictures of something extraordinary. And I said, well, let me see them. And the sergeant was handing it to me and his master sergeant says he, he can't see those. So all I know is that they had some pictures that I wasn't allowed to see. But normally, being the general's briefer, I had never been, you know, stopped from seeing any pictures that they had previously. Now, one interesting thing is many of the key personnel on the base at that time who had a connection to this with this were quickly transferred from the wing commander on down. Well, although the Pentagon had been very, very cooperative all the way, at the last minute the film was confiscated and we lost the whole finale of our show. But what I saw and heard was enough to convince me that, you know, the phenomenon of UFOs is real, very real. It was out one time and there against the black sky was a, was a white object. Uh, geometry of it was sort of like a, a beer can or a Coke can with a, with a pencil sticking out the, one of the round edges at about a 45 degree angle. What was it? McDivitt was able to snap a few pictures, but after turning the film over to NASA, the photographs disappeared. After the developed film was sent by plane to Washington, it was never seen or heard of again. Did you ever keep in touch with anybody about it or discuss it? How would I keep in touch with anybody about it? There's no way within the military or within the government of keeping track of something that is classified, unless you're directly involved in it, and I was not. Retired Air Force Colonel, Wendell Stevens, was part of a project gathering data on aerial phenomena over the Arctic Circle using B-29 aircraft in the late 1940s. My job was to supervise that team from my old Air Material Command headquarters in the installation and removal of this special equipment. The equipment that we put aboard included, included video cameras, surge detectors on all of the electrical systems, there's four or five and a B-29 magnetic detectors, radio frequency emission scanners, and a, a number of things to look for unidentified aerial phenomena. There were some very interesting reports that, that I heard from those crews of events that they recorded. But we were never allowed to read the tapes, look, develop the film, do any of those things there. It was all packed in a metal box and couriered to Washington each time an event took place. And, and so my curiosity was piqued by the secrecy.